Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back with my 100th upload to the channel. And to mark this monumental occasion, we're going to be starting a brand new Let's Play. And this is City Skylines, perhaps the only city builder worth playing at the moment and one of my favourites. It's been out for quite a long time and there's a new DLC just come out called the Sunset Harbour, which we're going to be using along with all of the DLC. So we're going to see quite a few assets. As with all of my Let's Plays, this one does have a purpose and our purpose is to reach the goal of 100,000. Once you reach the milestone of 70,000 and open a megapolis, you get the option to build the International Airport, which we're going to do. But the out and out goal for this series is to reach a population of over 100,000. Hence why we're going to name this city Century City. A rather fitting name to match my 100th upload, with the goal of getting to 100,000. I'm also running a competition along with this Let's Play, and if you'd like to win a copy of City Skylines on PC, simply type win somewhere within a comment down below, and we'll announce the winner in the next episode. So if you'd like to win a Steam key, then just simply add that word in a comment down below. And the map that we're going over right now is the Azure Gulf. This is a map from the new Sunset Harbour DLC that I've not played on yet. I've also got a couple of mods running, largely just to make the game look better. I've got a high def detail and ultimate eye candy on to get some of them night shots. I'm also using a cinematic camera mod. This is going to allow me to get some nice shots and aerial shots and some stuff that I want to experiment with in the editing process. So I'm excited to use some of them. The two mods that I have decided to run with that do change the game is Move It. This mod allows me just to pick things up and just do some tiny minute detail on the city. And I'm also using the roundabout mod. I could probably do without this, well I could do without it, but I do like having the option to be able to use this mod. It just makes using roundabouts in my city, I can get them a little bit more precise. So they're the two mods that we're going to be running. I don't really want to over mod this with too many mods and assets because there's so much DLC to go through and I haven't even used all of that. And being that we're going to be playing for a 100,000 population, we don't want to slow our game down to a complete crawl. So mods and asset wise, we're going to go very lightly. Okay, so whenever you begin a city, you always begin by placing a little tiny piece of road down and deleting it. And when you do, that opens up a few more roads to use, including the dirt track, which I'm going to be needing. And this is how I sort of plan my starter city out. Now, as you can see, we've got the highways coming in here, a joint one. And I want to be able to keep that highway going. It's going to have to join back up here in the next square. Or perhaps when we can buy this tile, perhaps we'd put a bridge in over here. For the most part, it's going to be a while before we need to use the highway at all though. We're not going to have a large amount of track it to begin with. But I want to bear in mind that I want to curve it perhaps around this mountain in the corner. And it's going to have to be heading out in that direction perhaps symmetrically or parallel to that other road there. For the time being, I'm just going to draw some more road and just have it going out this way. And we're going to kind of forget about the highway for the time being. But if I just put these two bits of road there, I'll know it's going to be going in that direction. In fact, I'll keep it going straight. We have turned on a couple of settings as well. We're not going to be using the natural disasters. Although things can happen that will destroy your town, fires and the services. Natural disasters is a DLC that I've switched off. And we're not going to be having meteors or earthquakes or anything to slow down the city. And we've also switched on unlimited resources for the industry's DLC. This just means that things like the oil and ore won't run out and I won't have to relocate these buildings in different places on the map. Which can be quite difficult once you've got all of these things detailed in. So we've got two little branches of road coming off here. One's going to go to an industrial side. And this road needs to become a roundabout. So this is why I'm going to use my roundabout builder. Can I adjust this to a radius of 45? 
Yeah, I think that'll be enough, but I want to bring this road just one more forward to there, and then we'll put our roundabout just here. That'll be great. Yeah, I won't need a roundabout so much on this side. I'm just going to lay some more things down and plan it out. So I think I'm happy with the outline of roads I've put down here, made a couple of changes, spaced out everything how I want. Now we've got to put our water in. And with the Sunset Harbour DLC, there is a new inland water treatment plant, so I'm going to start with that. Rather than pumping the sewage into the water, let's give it a try. And we'll put it up on this part of the map, because I'm not sure if I'll be buying this square of the map, or if I do, it'll be a while before I do. So we can stick our industry on this side and put all our messy buildings on this corner of the map and I'm going to put a direct water line in rather than the water tower it's more efficient and we're right next to water so it makes sense to do so and power wise I'm going to start off with a wind turbine we will probably upgrade to coal or oil, but because of this little hill here, I don't expect to build much, and uh, it's almost at the maximum. It's getting eight, and nine is the most you can get for energy produced by a wind turbine, so we'll go with that. And we'll probably add three or four more on to begin with. I'm just gonna draw these pylons up to our residential zone. And this little estate that we're going to build just at the back here. Now pipes wise I like to place everything along the roads where I can and keeping everything in line. It makes sense to have the pipe works run underneath the road if you ask me but it's probably not the most efficient way. You could save some money by spacing it out a little bit better than this but it just feels this is the way you should do it. Let's come around here. And then there's these little coastal houses here. I've tried not to make it too square and make the road follow the beach coastline, which will make for quite a nice estate. Now, this area is always going to be remaining as low population residential. We're going to have an avenue going down the centre. But yeah. Okay. Let's go to our budget. And I'm going to take the water right down to 50%. Be a while before we need that up at 100%. The wind turbine, on the other hand, it, it probably it doesn't cost very much. And I will have to turn that up quite soon, I'm sure. But for now, to save a few pennies, we'll turn everything down to 50%. Let's put our first little houses in here. Since we've got the power line going this way, we'll try and get them to move into the centre first. Along here we're going to put some shops. And this is eventually going to be an avenue off of that roundabout. And perhaps if we just put a square of industry down as well so they've got somewhere to work when they start moving in. And here we go, we're just at negative 51, but it won't take long for us to start getting into the plus. And I still have 27,000 to build with, but I've been quite sensible with the money so far. Okay, well let's let everybody move in and see how we get on. to address the power I think even if I up the budget to 100% now it won't be quite enough for what we need so it's about time to install another wind turbine and 
They're almost as efficient as they can be on this hill here. I can't see any nines, but only one short of the estimated production on the maximum estimated production, that is. Okay. That should take it. Yeah, we're back in the green now with the power. And of course, that's quite a cheap supply of power. And we're already into the plus. We're doing plus 740. Things are moving, people are happy, they're moving in. Well on our way to a worthy little village. Of course I know they've only got dirt track roads, so we can think about updating some of these for permanent. Let's put another little space of residential in. I deliberately left an extra gap because I am going to have some pathways going between these houses later on, but we don't have access to pathways yet. So, I'm just planning everything out, and like you say, failing to plan is planning to fail. And here we are, a little hamlet. It's our first milestone we've unlocked. Now, garbage zones, landfill sites, and an elementary school. We've also got health services, but we're not going to be using the health service just yet. Our population will do just fine for the time being, as long as we take care of the rubbish. If we have rubbish piling up, our citizens are not going to be happy. We're also going to need that third turbine. I could go for a coal power plant, but I really want to get the garbage area sorted out as quickly as possible and have that managed well before it even becomes a problem. And again, we could open up a school, but we'll just hold on for that. Now then, I think we can upgrade some of these roads. Now I can only upgrade to the basic road, we can't put anything fancy on, some nice grass to stop them parking, or any trees, but this does add a little bit of value to the area, and it will make things travel along the roads faster. Now I'm pretty sure that all of these roads are going to be staying in place and I'm happy with the way it's laid out here. These are all going to be permanent now. And what I want to do is I want to add another road going over the top of this highway. I'm going to put a little bridge in and a way for our garbage trucks and stuff to get into the center of our little village here without going down the highway. They can do this. So we just come out here to 1140 in cost. And then I just want this pillar to snap right next to the road properly. Um, will you let me just in here? Yeah, there it is. Just want it to snap there. And then we want to come down by 114 again, but there is a hill right there, and it might look a bit strange to kind of come down sort of here. I might come back one more. And then I'm probably going to build a curved road over this hill. Let's see what it looks like when we build it straight. Yeah, I'm going to have to adjust that, it doesn't look quite right. I'll make that into a curved road. Not much I'm going to be doing on this hill, really. Yeah, let's redo this. Um, power, what's going on? Oh, our shops have no power. I went through the power cable. Um, can we just, you know, we just come here. Does that switch you on? I think it's close enough, it is, yeah, there we go. Shops have got power back. I just want to sort out this road and straighten it up a little bit. Make it a little bit more curved. And this is where I like to use the move it mod. I'm just going to adjust this road slightly. Add more of a curve to it. Straighten things out. Yeah, I'm happy with the way it's coming down lifting up there. 
Now I am going to put the recycling centre straight down. This one's from the Green Cities DLC and it certainly saves a lot of landfill by recycling but I'm going to put a landfill down as well and these two things combined at the start is really going to help us get on top of all of the garbage collection um, but that was quite a lot of money to spend right on the off I still think that will be worthwhile now the garbage trucks can come along here and just drop down into our little city now to cover the cost of that we're going to have to add some more residents and we'll go back to some two lane road and we're just going to update the rest of this I'm pretty sure I'm happy with everything the way it's going to be working a nice big space before we hit the avenue or what will be the avenue and let's get ourselves a school down as well I want to place it somewhere on the back road perhaps here um, uh, I might move this school out the way actually because I might want to curve this road round to follow the beach line but for the moment let's just take the budget down to 70 or so and everything else looks good our school's going to need a power source and this is going to encourage some more people to move in now we've got this facility down it's also going to add a little bit more land value to our estate just on the side here fantastic as you can see we've got a more of a demand for residential I don't want to build on these two triangles I've got an idea for some parks there but yeah I'm liking it I think what we'll do is we'll just upgrade this here to an avenue and rebuild some more shops let's knock these down before we get too built out this is going to be the main vein of our city running through the center coming off that roundabout let's put these back up and I think we'll add another line not that many another line of commercial here so there we go we've got people going to work on the industrial estate and they can come back in and go to the shops at the moment that's how it's going to be working but I think I need to lay out and design another estate so I'm going to get the dirt road tool and do that So I've moved the school over and changed some things round. I'd much prefer having that road curve round at the bottom here. And uh, we just need to hook up some power. And there we go, we've got the little elementary school. So we need to get some water in for everybody on this new little estate here. Go up this way. Look, there's a little gap here. They probably all got water, but I'll just curve it round like so. Okay, everybody's got water. And I think we can start placing some more residential. To save on power cables, I'm just going to put this line on here. And then that will give power for these bits here. We're just going to slowly let it build up and fill up that side of the estate as well. Could probably do with a few more jobs, so I'm going to place a little bit more industry down. But this whole area is likely to change. I think at the back here, we're probably going to have some resources, maybe a little bit of oil or steel in these mountains just here. So this industry area is probably going to be heavily focused on one of the industries there. But for now it's just generic industry. Here we go, we've got some more residential going in. 
It's looking good. Oh, Worthy Village, fantastic. Okay, we've opened up some more policies, uh, more things we can place down, services, police stations, fire stations. Probably hold off on the police station for a little bit, but we could put the fire station in. And that will certainly help out. As you can see our next estate's kind of working there, so I'm going to continue our avenue down, all the way down here. Even though I don't need it at the moment, it's just going to help me plan things out as we go. Okay. Now I think just here on the corner might be a good place to place our fire engine. go everybody's happy about that I think we've got good coverage for fire and we can also put our taxes up I think I'm gonna put them up to 11% this will slow growth down slightly in our city but I want to keep up with everything I've had to take the first loan out to add on to this estate here build some roads but I'm not gonna take another loan out we'll repay that back and just let things build up here now so the fire service it might struggle to get to the industrial estate a little bit I'll probably have to put that own dedicated fire service on over there at some point but for now this should serve quite well for where it is yeah I'm liking it get to the end here Wonderful, and we've hit 1300 population, so we're now a tiny town. We've got access to industry areas, parks and plazas, and lots more pathways and roads. So, that's exactly what I wanted, and I need to put a little bit more detail down, and we'll start building some pathways. Okay, it looks like we've got a little bit of crime happening, so, Perhaps now's a good idea. We'll stick the police station in. And yeah, just at the back of this avenue here. That'll be plenty of coverage for everybody. It's all sat up there by itself at the moment, but it'll do for now. Now I wanna think about putting some parks in. We could put the medical center down. I'm going to put it directly opposite the school. So now we've got a health service. If anybody's getting sick, I should more than cope with our tiny little town. And I think right here, now we've opened up parks, I want to put a little playground down next to the school. A uh, small playground, does that fit? That'll fit perfectly just at the back here. And that looks good. And I think next to that, we're going to have a couple of shops, as you do. There's always usually a couple of news agents or shops near the school. And I have... I didn't zone these completely with residential, so let's put these back as a four square. And I'm going to place our first pathway back, right down the back of these shops here, coming onto the road. I want to encourage walking right from the start. And we'll go for a cycle path, but yeah, just this little path here. I'll stick one in here, like so, just there. And this is the main reason I like to use the Move It mod, because it's very difficult to do pathways exactly. But we just pull this just down here, so it lines up with the pavement. Okay. Hamlock Gardens. So I've just finished designing our first park here. We've got a couple of cafes down, a little restroom area, 
and it's just a little cut that they can make through on this triangle and that will generate a small amount of money for us but more importantly it's going to make uh, our area a little bit more wealthy I've put a pathway in curve into the back there some pathways through the middle of these houses just here and put another pathway with some trees going up and anticipating building up a little bit later on we need some more power and I can't quite afford a coal power plant at the moment so I think we're gonna have to go for one more electric yeah we can't that's at 19 so we'll go for one more wind turbine before we stick another power plant down looks like we've got some crime happening but our police station is not uh, oh, well it's out of power at the moment so we're gonna have to put a wind turbine down I'll explain why we haven't got any services so I think one more would be fine just out the back here just there would be fine that is great I quite like the wind turbines on the landscape but we don't want too many of them I think four is enough and I think in the next episode we'll have to think about putting the coal power plant down or another source of power because the wind turbines as good as they are they're not going to power our whole city and I think in the next episode we'll experiment with the industry's DLC and select an industry specialization up at the back here but that's going to have to wait until next time don't forget if you'd like to win a copy of City Skylines on PC then simply put the word win or within a comment down below and we'll announce the winner in the next episode so if you'd like to win that steam key just comment win down below we're celebrating century city and my 100th upload to the channel which is quite a bit we're certainly going to have to upgrade this area i think i'll just paint a little tiny bit more industry in just to encourage some more growth for the time being but we'll be sorting this out and changing this round I think perhaps next time don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and next episode we'll be heading towards boomtown and getting some access to trains although it might be a while before we add the trains and really liking the look of this city let's follow our little garbage truck as always thank you very much for watching and let me know what you thought of our next Let's Play series along the bottom. I know we are going to be starting the ARC series very soon, guys. Don't worry, I've not forgotten. But this one's going to be running along parallel to ARC. And at the moment, I've completed both of the games that we were playing in Subnautica and the island map. So we're going to be starting this along with Scorched Earth later on this month. But that's it for me on my 100th upload. Hope you enjoyed that one. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games. And I'll see you.